So once you take these eggs, where are they kept? These are these big cans in which they are stored. According to you, what are the drawbacks or potential risks of uh, you know getting eggs frozen? These are very common ones of mood swings, abdominal bloating, constipation, little pain abdomen. There is one other thing which people hear of is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. That is when you stimulate the ovaries to make the eggs, sometimes it becomes like a runaway horse. Too many eggs form, leading to certain complications in the woman. Again, thankfully, we've sort of mastered the technique of IVF because of these techniques being used during IVF. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is practically almost negligible or non-existent. And suppose if someone was doing embryo freezing, mm -hmm. then will the process be a little different? Process. So once you've frozen the eggs, the next would be to take the partner's sperms, fertilize the eggs, make the embryos and store the embryos instead of the eggs. So you've gone one more class ahead, okay. closer to your goal, because your ultimate goal is to have a baby. Okay. And uh, so overall, you said this process can take somewhere between 10 to 15 days. Yes. Uh, for the once you start yes. the injections. Yes. And uh, so once you take these eggs, where are they kept? So there are these huge canisters in which we have liquid nitrogen. Okay. So these eggs are then put into straws, hmm. small little straws. These straws are put into bigger canisters. Okay. Those canisters are now plunged into liquid nitrogen. So these are these big cans in which they are stored. And they are stored in the clinic here? They are stored in the clinic. They don't require any um, electricity or any special premises per se. Okay. They just kept there. We need to, we have certain monitors dipped inside the liquid nitrogen okay. to monitor the temperature and the depth of the liquid nitrogen. And these liquid nitrogen canisters are continuously refilled uh, over periods of time. And how secured are these? Because I've always wondered what if what are the chances of getting mixed with someone else's eggs? Okay. Can they be destroyed? You know. Mm. So how, how safe are they? So two questions. One is about the mixing and about the destroying bit. Yeah. So about the mixing bit, yes, it is possible or across the world, not just in India, even in the developed nations mm. and the technically advanced nations, it's happened that uh, the gametes have been mixed. Okay. But over the years, there have been certain uh, methods which have been put in to practically negate the chances of such a thing happen, mm -hmm. happening. So what we do, what is called as a double witnessing. Okay. So for every procedure which is happening, there is always a person standing behind and kind of rechecking what you're doing. And there are these small, small little ways of doing things. For example, if there is one egg collection happening, only one egg collection will happen. Okay. You won't have two happening at the same time. And there is a name calling which happens. Mrs. X, Mrs. X, Mrs. X, Mrs. X, Mrs. X. Um, that is by way, way of doing it manually. Yeah. But now we've advanced to a part beyond that where we have these plates labeled with certain uh, RFID tags even before the work starts. And it's placed on a desk, which recognizes these RFID tags. Oh. So once you've done that, if you place a wrong dish, it will give you an alarm. Mm. So you know that everything is going absolutely technically right. With that, there is a special coding which happens on which straw, which canister, which bigger canister it goes into. And all of that is properly documented and by double witnessing. Do understand that with all tech being placed, someone still has to put that yeah. tag. Sure. Mistakes can still happen, but they usually don't. And I keep telling patients, I do understand that as a patient, you have a lot to lose. But as a professional, I have even more to lose. Yeah. Because if a problem happens, that's the end of my license. Sure. And that's the end of my life and career as well. So, which is where embryologists get trained for years together before they get into a process. And luckily for me, my wife is my embryologist. Nice. She definitely wouldn't want anything happening to her <laughs> husband. So she makes doubly sure that nothing goes wrong. I think power couple is a great feat. And as far as um, destruction is concerned, other than a natural calamity, usually okay. nothing goes wrong. Okay. The other thing which can go wrong is that the liquid nitrogen dips to a level 
where the embryos or the eggs get exposed. Okay. Again, once you have those alarms built in, and you keep the liquid nitrogen levels at almost 75-80%. You don't even talk about it at 30%. Okay. So at 75% itself, you get an alarm and it's replenished. Okay. So it doesn't happen. Oh. So it's it's pretty safe. It's it pretty safe, like. yes. yes. Um, and for how long can you store it? As of now, we don't know. But the longer we are storing it, the longer we are realizing that it can be stored for more. Oh, really? So... 10-15 years, very easily. Wow, that's interesting. I thought probably a few months. Or no, maybe. no, no. Because we've all seen those science fiction movies where, you know, the astronauts go into that little capsule yeah. and they wake up after what, maybe 1000 <laughs> years or yes. 500 years, absolutely refreshed and young as ever. This is what happens. You're placing those eggs in suspended animation and they wake up just the way they were when they were frozen. So it's whether it's one hour, one day, one year or 10 years. It's the oh, same. Wow. So that's interesting. So are you trying to say that once the eggs are frozen, a woman can have a baby whenever they want? Yes, she can. Technically, theoretically, she can. Okay. The only problem is, we don't know if these eggs are going to be able to give you a pregnancy necessarily. So there is no guarantee for these eggs <clears throat> to get pregnancy, right? Yes. I'll explain a little why. Yes. Today, if say someone comes in for an IVF yeah. and says, Doc, take out my eggs. Can you give me a guarantee that in one collection of eggs, you're going to be able to give me a pregnancy? Unfortunately, IVF has not advanced to a point where we can guarantee a pregnancy from one egg collection. But for this young woman, God forbid we fail to give a pregnancy out of the X number of eggs we've collected. We always have the advantage of collecting once again. Yeah. But here is a woman who collected at 25 and is coming back at 45. And hoping in her mind or probably reassured in her mind, I'm going to get pregnant. And if that one crop of eggs has not managed to give her a pregnancy, we've already missed the bus. Yeah. We can't collect eggs from her anymore. So, roughly, if we collect, they say, about 15-20 eggs, at a younger age, you have a pretty decent chance of getting pregnant out of those one crop of eggs. So, honestly, it's a little scary now. Because, I'm just thinking in my head, um, as you said, if someone gets their eggs frozen at 25, and at 45, they've already lost the bus. I mean, then what are their chances of getting pregnant? Not very bright. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and unfortunately, we are swayed by the West. We do see women in the Western world getting pregnant at 40 and 41 and 42 and sometimes with their own eggs as well. Mm -hmm. What we don't realize is the biological aging in Asian women, and this is documented scientifically, is almost apart by six years as compared to their Caucasian counterparts. So what is, you know, 36 for us, or maybe 36 for them, is 42 for us. Okay. So that is the kind of difference. So most Asian women would have difficulty conceiving with their own eggs past the age of 40. So the earlier we freeze it, the better it is. And you'd also have more number of eggs frozen, the earlier you freeze it. So basically the chances uh, of success rate is when you freeze it earlier. Earlier, yes. Okay. And uh, is this an expensive process? Um, yes, it is an expensive process. So it comprises of several parts. The first part is of the injections. Mm -hmm. They're costly injections. So you'll be put back by almost about say 70, 80, 90,000 rupees for those 10, 12 days of injections if we use the best in the world. Mm -hmm. Then of course is the IVF process actually. So say for example, we charge 85,000 rupees for doing the IVF process. What is additional? is the freezing process yeah. of the number of eggs you freeze and then the storage process because of keeping the facility alive, we need to keep charging every six months to one year. What's an approximate range that you would give for the entire process of just freezing? Um, about two lakh rupees okay. from start two. to the finish and the freezing bit all taken together, roughly about two lakhs. Two lakhs. So, uh, you know, once the eggs are frozen, 
and uh, kept for whatever number you, of years. What happens and what's the process when someone wants to use their frozen eggs? So, I told you about the IVF process where yes. those eggs are fertilized with the sperms to make the embryo. Yeah. This is exactly what we do. So, when someone comes in and says, okay, now I have a partner or I wish to now get pregnant, yeah. we defreeze or thaw those eggs. Then they are fertilized with the sperm. Okay. The embryo is made and transferred back into the woman. As simple as that. Um, so, a lot of women these days have either PCOS or PCOD. I was literally on the verge of PCOD at one point. Does these things affect um, the process of egg freezing? Can someone with these diseases have uh, egg, egg freezing? freezing? Yes, of course. In fact, women with PCOS have more eggs at any point in time. But at the same time, the quality of them is not very good, which brings okay. us back to the initial step one, that before you get into egg freezing, we need to make things right. We need to control the PCOS. Maybe okay. ask to drop weight, give vitamins, do certain tests that may be more specific to PCOS, and then get into the egg freezing process so we have better quality eggs from them. So mm -hmm. according to you, what are the drawbacks or potential risks of uh, you know, getting eggs frozen? So the common misconception that people have is there are going to be long-term problems associated with egg collection and ovarian stimulation. So let me assure, reassure you first that there are absolutely no long-term complications of doing this process. And this has been scientifically documented. Mm. As far as short-term problems are concerned, again, these are very common ones of mood swings, abdominal bloating, constipation, um, little pain abdomen, um, just those kind of things which happen during those 10, 12 days, maybe even persisting for the next five to seven days till the periods come. Mm. Barring that, the, there are of course complications which can be associated with any procedure, whether it's a delivery, whether yeah. it's a surgery. So those complications can also happen with the IVF process, but it's very, very, very minimal. Okay. There is one other thing which people hear of is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. That is when you stimulate the ovaries to make the eggs, sometimes it becomes like a runaway horse. Too many eggs form, okay. leading to certain complications in the woman. Again, thankfully, we've sort of mastered the technique of IVF, wherein in the last 10 years, because of these techniques being used during IVF, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is practically almost negligible or non-existent. So uh, once the eggs are frozen, Whenever someone wants to conceive or have a baby, do they only do it through their frozen egg or can they also do it naturally? So it's an insurance. Okay. You just hope you don't ever have to use that insurance. Okay. So when someone wants to conceive, we always tell them that there is no reason, even if you're maybe 35 or 38 or 39 or 40, that you can't conceive with your eggs. Give it some time. This insurance will still stay. It doesn't expire. You can always give yourself as much time as you want to, two months, three months, six months, one year. If you do not conceive naturally, then you can come back to us and we can use these eggs. Because freezing these eggs has not taken away their natural fertility. They're still making eggs every month. So who do you think <coughs> will actually benefit from egg freezing and what are the reasons? So there are social reasons, there are medical reasons. Let's talk about the medical reasons first. So, unfortunately, some young women also have to undergo certain uh, therapies for cancer. So, before undergoing those therapies, they can come back and freeze their eggs okay. because those, their ovaries may get destroyed by these therapies. If they are undergoing a particular surgery for whatever reason, diseases like endometriosis and stuff like that, which may damage their eggs and ovaries, they can again come back and freeze their eggs before getting into these procedures. Sometimes, even during an IVF process, where a couple is coming in for an IVF, mm -hmm. we've taken out the eggs. Unfortunately, the man is unable to give sperms. Or one day prior to the egg collection, he falls sick. He has fever. We've even had cases of men being bitten by dogs. They're developing wow. jaundice overnight. And we've now collected the eggs, but we don't have any sperms available. Mm -hmm. So again, egg freezing is required in those cases. Then, of course, social egg freezing, which is what we are talking about, yeah. is when people do it by choice, wherein there is a woman of a certain age, she feels she's not yet ready to have a partner. Maybe she's not found the right partner. 
she maybe feels that you know life is passing by and the biological age is you know a clock is ticking and she wants to freeze her eggs we've even had married couples come in where maybe they're still not very sure of them being together and the woman has actually frozen her eggs instead of converting it into embryos and storing it so that's basically are all the reasons why one would want to freeze their eggs no i totally get it because i have been married for 2 <clears throat> years now and uh, both of us have our own respective startups and uh, we do want to take some time before we you know plan a baby and uh, i think uh, it's very important to know whether we can do it or not do it and there's just so much of pressure pressure from family pressure from you know in your head you are thinking the biological clock as i said so i think um, i think it's great if we can we can do it 